All right, hi. Um, I'm in, I work on the Jupiter project now out of uh, Simula Research Lab in Oslo in Norway. And I'm gonna be talking to uh, about some work that uh, my colleagues uh, at, uh, at Simula have been working on under, um, partly under the Jupiter project and partly under the Open Dream Kit project, which is a, Euro a large European project for uh, virtual research environments for mathematics. But one of the things they let us do is solve uh, problems like diffing and merging notebooks. So we start as, at this point, roughly all of my talks start with um, some new definition of what is a notebook. So just for anybody, if there is anybody who is uh, not quite familiar, a notebook is, um, as, as Jupyter defines it, is a notebook, uh, is a document containing some prose, which might include math, um, that uh, Jupyter encodes in, in Markdown, some code to run in, in cells, and then the notebook document itself also contains uh, the output that's the result of running this code, which can be images, it can be HTML, it can be JavaScript, it can be, um, can be all kinds of stuff. But um, that's kind of the concept of the notebook, but when um, you start thinking ab about diffing and merging, you need to think about, well, what, what is actually the kind of the data structure of a notebook? What, what, what is a notebook really? And it's, um, not quite as nice as the, the, the rendered view. It's we've got um, this collection of uh, JSON data. Um, we don't store the purely the, the rendered result. We store actually a structured document of the information that we need to reconstruct the document. So that means that we've got metadata about um, uh, metadata about different pieces of the document. Each cell is a, is a JSON object. We have the source code for, for the cells, and then we have actually um, keyed by MIME type the, the outputs, every output in the, in the document. So if, in principle, that's nice. We've got you know, all this structured information that's easy to find. If you open a notebook in, um, in JSON and just load it as a Python dictionary, it's easy to poke around and see what everything means. Um, there's certainly value in that. But um, when you start um, part of the goal if you've got a, notebook, a, a file format that's JSON, humans shouldn't be looking at it, right? Humans should be looking at a res, a, some processed result of that. So anytime you've got a human looking at uh, JSON, then something has gone wrong. So one of the reasons for that is if we look at the, you know, our source code from our nice Python cell, um, you can tell like that's, it's not that hard to read, but you know, we've got these extra quotes, this unnecessary indentation, new line symbols on the end and a bunch of commas. You know, it's not the best way to look at Python code. It's not horrible, but it's, you know, it's, uh, it's not the best. And then we've also got down here, you know, we have this nice feature that a notebook is a single file that you can share, you can look at it on NV Viewer, and that's part of the reason for that is that the outputs are in the file. Um, part of the disadvantage of that is that JSON is a text format and images are not text, um, which means that you have to do a text encoding of binary data, which means we've got these base64 blobs that are, um, you see just the hint of, of how not so nice they are. So when you start thinking about the difference between two notebooks, what does, what does that look like if you just say, all right, regular traditional tool, what's the difference between two notebooks? might look a bit like this. It's not, again, not so horrible in this case, where you can see you've got the, the text input and um, some text output. You know, there's a little bit of extra uh, cruft on the, the quotes and everything. Um, however, uh, you know, you, it's not quite as easy to see as if it were just a plain uh, Python script or Markdown file or something like that. Or if you look at a different part of the same file, um, it's just a big mess. Um, so I have asked, asked Git, what's the difference in this text file? And it says, well, there's a whole lot of text that's different. Um, and you know, the notebook format, and I know that that's not text, that's an image. But when I ask my diff tool to diff this JSON file, it doesn't know that. So it's gonna say, here's a bunch of text, it's different, um, that's your problem. And so one of the things that we're looking to deal with is how do we, um, Look at, look at notebooks and actually understand what's different about them. So that's not, that's the situation right now, which is less than great. 
So what about the, the tools we have for working with notebooks? What's kind of the current situation? How, how are things going? So GitHub's great. GitHub renders notebooks um, uh, with, with a little help from, from NB Convert. You know, you look at a notebook on GitHub, and you don't see JSON, you see a notebook. That's, that's really nice. Um, what happens when you look at a diff on, on GitHub? It says, ah, that diff is too gross, I'm not even gonna try. And so that's, that's again, not great if you're trying to review a pull request and all you get is, this is different. I don't know what to do. Um, then, you know, that impedes your, your, you know, your GitHub code review workflow, looking at pull requests um, all in one place. That's, you know, we, we don't, um, it's not a great way to work. And it's kind of one of the disadvantages of moving from traditional Python scripts and, and files and things to notebooks if you're working in a collaborative setting on, on GitHub. Um, this is kind of one, of one of the main drawbacks of collaborating with uh, notebooks on, on GitHub. So that's not great. So what about our, our regular local tools? So if you, if you read uh, what GitHub said, it said you should take this uh, file and go look at it on, on your own computer. Um, so what does that happen if we do it on our own, on our own computer? So most diff tools are line-based diffs. So they say this is a text file. Text files are composed of lines. Um, I'm going to compare the lines and, and then show you a difference of the lines. They assume files have no structure. They don't understand anything about the content of the files. And all lines are treated equally. That, you know, this is a file that has some content. All the lines, as far as, I'm con as, far as the tool is concerned, all the lines should be treated the same and they have no understanding of uh, the content of, of that document. So even with the Python file where you're changing some text in, uh, in a function, the diff tools won't, um, don't have an understanding of the Python language and, and sometimes make um, silly decisions about uh, showing you uh, a, a difference in a file based on the uh, naive alignment that they do since they don't try to understand the content of the file. And for simple text things like, like Python scripts and Markdown and stuff, that's, that's usually not a big deal. It's usually close enough and then you can, you can help it over the finish line. So what about Markdown? So if we had a notebook, we convert it. So NB Convert lets us convert uh, notebooks to Markdown. Um, this is a, a diff of a notebook converted to Markdown. We see, we actually just see, you know, the, there was a, a line removed. Um, there's an output that changed, or maybe it didn't actually, we don't know. Um, and then the, there's some Python code that changed. So it's just, it's getting us a nice plain text, uh, plain text difference that's just, I see there's some input that changed, but it discards information, right? When you convert a notebook to Markdown, all you really get is uh, the input. And sometimes that's great. Sometimes actually all you care about is the input, and then you're really separating the I want to save kind of the source, you know, the the input that I'm working with, and then I don't actually want to save all the interactive stuff, and that's fine. Um, and if that's what you want to do, you can uh, serialize things to Markdown um, during the diffing process, and you actually get uh, a pretty good, uh, pretty good experience. Um, you can also get kind of somewhere in between by splitting files. By, so rather than discarding into your information, you actually take it out of uh, you take it out and put it somewhere else. Um, so you're, you're not discarding it, you're just putting it aside. Um, and there can be challenges with that because then the files can get out of sync um, or you can leave uh, leftover files from the last export and it can, it can get a little bit tricky. And there are tools, um, IPyMD and NoteDown, um, that provide things like converting notebooks to Markdown, converting Markdown to notebooks, um, and even in your uh, notebook web application, when you save your notebook, it will actually write an, a uh, markdown file instead of a JSON file. Um, and for uh, collaborating with things on GitHub, that this can uh, provide a better experience than the, the default JSON format. Um, there are disadvantages that people, other people can't actually open your notebooks without installing the same tools. So it's, you know, there's a, a bit of a trade-off of a, of a nicer GitHub workflow versus a, um, a file format that more people have uh, the, the tools to, to work with. So what about notebooks when we're thinking about doing these, these comparisons? Notebooks are structured data. We've got all this structural information that we as people who understand notebooks 
know, you know, this is a cell, this is input, this is output. And there's a hierarchy of kind of importance of the data. Like the most important thing is the, the input, you know, the code and the markdown that you wrote that you get when you save it to markdown. Um, but that's not the only information that you care about. But we can sort of, if we're thinking about comparing two notebooks, we can prioritize input over the other content because we know the other content can be regenerated, but maybe we, actually, maybe we still care that it changed or how it changed. And there's also different kinds of images, different kinds of data. So it's not just JSON, uh, native JSON stuff. We're also cramming a bit, of, a bit of other types so we can theoretically um, actually reason about you know, the kind of output that this is. We, can, um, we, we have that when we're looking at the document, we actually have the information about what, what this piece of the document is and we can, we can use that information to make decisions in terms, of in terms of computing the comparisons. So what about JSON patch? So we've got a JSON document. Um, there is a standard library for uh, JSON diff and JSON patch. There's a, uh, an IETF standard, I think, um, defining how to compare JSON files, and that's great. It understands the structure because notebooks are JSON. A JSON diff will always, it'll never mess up your JSON, make it invalid, um, but it doesn't understand the content. So it, it gets us to, you know, the, the structure and not messing with the structure, but it doesn't get us to the, the fact that there's still gonna be that big blob of, of image text or, or, uh, or things like that. So it, it gets us partway there, but it doesn't let, let us make the, you know, the more, uh, intel more intelligent, thoughtful decisions about the fact that this isn't just a JSON document. We know a lot about the structure of the document that we're looking at. So from our perspective, um, when we start working on this project, what should the difference be when you're, when you're comparing notebooks? It should always be valid, that, you know, step one, that if you compare notebooks, you merge notebooks, you should get a notebook back, you shouldn't get, uh, this isn't JSON anymore, um, if you've ever encountered that after trying to merge notebooks. It should be, you know, properly structured, it should take, you know, it should actually take the content of the notebook into account. When you're, when you're doing the comparison, you should be thinking about what, you know, what, what is in the notebook, what's important, you know, how do we deal with that? So a bit of an aside about how one computes diffs, because how we think about notebooks is, uh, is relevant to how we compute, compute the diffs. When you're, when you're dip, uh, comparing two, two things, the main thing that you do is, uh, or most all of the work you're involved in is this LCS problem for finding these longest common subsequences. So if you've got two sequences, and then you want to align them based on the longest common subsequence so that you get, you get the smallest difference. You know, there's lots of different correct transformations to get from the top sequence to the bottom sequence. But in order for the, the diff to be intelligible and useful, you wanna have a, uh, the smallest transformations, uh, uh, or you wanna have small transformations um, and kind of make it as clear as possible what actually happened. So the first alignment is easy. We got three elements that are the same in the same position, um, but then we've got another uh, longer subsequence that um, is not not quite aligned, and there are kind of diverging elements in the middle. And so part of um, computing the difference of two sequences is actually finding these and then um, figuring out which ones should be treated as the same, um, and then similar, and then kind of finding the, the transforms for removing those two items and the, re removing the red and the green and adding the blue and then adding the green on the end to go from the top to the bottom. So if we have some code, it doesn't really matter what the content of this code is. Um, this is from the NB-Dime source. Uh, you can see that there is a block that's the same. It's the same, it's aligned. There's another block that's the same but not aligned. And then we can see that in between there, there's some uh, a bit that was uh, deleted for going from left to right. Um, but then the first line is not quite the same. There's a, there's a couple extra characters. And so this points to, even when you're doing a plain text diff, it's more complicated than a sequence, um, than a sequence of lines, because with a sequence of lines, it's just a scalar. Is it the same or is it not the same? And with a text file, you actually deal with some amount of similarity. You know, is this, is this the same line that maybe changed a little bit, or is this a totally different line that happens to be similar? 
And so there's a lot of heuristics in, in, doing, uh, in computing alignments in terms of how you deal with similar items. And this is what, uh, this comes up a lot in the notebook differ, uh, diffing because a notebook isn't just a bunch of lines that have, um, have uh, difference distances. They have structure, and when we're comparing uh, two, uh, two cells for whether they're the same or similar, different pieces of that cell actually should rate differently in terms of how you compare whether it's the same cell or not. So when you're aligning notebooks, first thing we do is we, we align and t say, like, is this cell in all its input and output, is it, is it the exact same? If it, if it is, it's the same cell, right? There's, there's no question there. But then we also do a comparison ignoring differences in output. So if you took the same cell and you reran it and it produced different results based on some changes further up in the document, we should still be able to identify that, yeah, this is probably the same cell because the, the input's the same. And then we also align on um, the content of the input of the cell. So just like a regular line diff will do some similarity comparison on individual lines that might differ a little bit, we also do alignment based on how similar the content of the cell is so that we can tell that a cell is actually the same cell um, if you changed a few lines here and there. So that brings us to the actual project, NB Dime. Um, a lot of people are wondering why the hell it's called NB Dime. Um, it's for notebook diff and merge, and it's also because NB diff was taken. Um, <laughs> and um, we also do merge. So what are, what are our goals in the project? So we're making tools for diffing and merging notebooks. Um, and that includes command line rendering of diffs. So you're just in a terminal ha hacking away and you wanna say, okay, all right, what's the difference? I don't wanna go somewhere else. What's the difference between these, uh, these notebooks? Um, but also, you know, notebooks really are rich documents. If you wanna see, really see what, uh, how a notebook changed, um, then uh, an HTML view is a logical choice. So we'll also be, uh, be providing um, HTML renderings of the diffs between notebooks. And because part of the point of this is easing the pain of collaboration, um, is we wanna integrate with, uh, with Git tools so that we can actually solve the problems of working with Git and notebooks can be a pain. Uh, we want to reduce exact, specifically that pain, not just solve diffing over here and then leave Git alone to still be unpleasant. So the basic tools um, for this part of nbdime are nbdiff for a console diff of notebooks, nbdiff web for a web rendering of, uh, of the difference, and uh, nbdiff driver for integrating with Git, which I'll get to in a little bit. So what does it look like when you do, uh, when you compute the diff of two notebooks? It looks a bit like this. So I've got uh, two notebooks and I can see um, at the top I've got some text output that changed. So I was using matplotlib 152. In the other notebook, I was using matplotlib, uh, the new matplotlib beta, because um, this was from this week. And then I changed the, because I'm using new, new matplotlib, I set uh, uh, color map to, to viridis. And I could see that there's an image that changed, but I don't see that there's a huge bunch of stuff that changed. I just see there's an image here. I'm not gonna show you all of it. I'm just gonna show you that there's an image here because I know you're in a terminal and I can only talk to you through text. I know this is an image. It's pointless for me to show you all of it because your eyes don't understand how to turn base64 into pixels. And so I'm just gonna say, yeah, there's stuff here um, and I'm gonna hide it from you. But I'm, I'm not gonna hide that there's stuff here. And then we can see, we also see, so in Jupyter when you produce uh, an output, it can have multiple representations. We'll actually show you the diff, um, all the representations we can see that not only did the image change, but also the text representation, which just is a memory address, so not that interesting. And we can also see that there's some metadata that by updating matplotlib, the height of my figure actually changed a little bit. So nbdiff web, just call a different program. What does that look like? Same notebook, it looks a bit like that. So we've got um, cells that are aligned. We can tell that these are the same cell, but some lines have been changed. Um, some lines have been added. There's a cell that's exactly the same, so we just show it, show it in the middle there, and then here's our plot that's different with the different color map. And
And what about Git? So Git has the notion of drivers and tools. A Git driver is a plugin for doing a custom diff, so computing a custom diff or custom merge operation at the command line. And so we have git and be diff driver that you can enable on the command line to say, hey git, um, let me take care of diffs of notebooks. And a git tool, um, for whatever reason, is a separate thing um, for launching GUI applications to say, I want to I want to actually launch an application to view the, the diff of these notebooks. And we've got nb diff tool for that, which you invoke. Um, as with any uh, git GUI tool, we use git diff tool instead of git diff, and then add dash g for GUI. And now we can demo a couple things. So we can prove that it actually works. I've got two notebooks here. I can compute the diff, and I can see, yes, there is in fact a diff. You can see the, the inputs have changed. Some inputs have changed. Yeah, I guess it's cut off a little. And, and some map have changed. And the conda env I used is also different. That's how I switched matplotlib version, so I can see that my kernel is different. But I can also do nbdiff web, and that opens a browser that gives me my view of the notebook. And if you don't care about the output, you can hide it. You can look at the cells and see, you know, here's my, here's the diff in my notebooks. And there's a lot of UI work to do, but we got the basics. Oops. And I've got a repo ready here, so we did that, uh, I mentioned the git diff driver, so I've enabled the um, git diff driver for nbdime. So I can do git diff, I can compare two branches, and it called out to nb, nb diff. So now when I compare two branches on any repo on my computer, if there are notebooks, I'll see this instead of JSON. So anywhere, nobody will ever show me that base64 crap again. And then showing, this is a, a commit I have on the IPython repo, changing one of our example notebooks. And I can call the diff tool, so I invoke git diff tool dash g for, hey git, open your GUI diff for any files, any files that happen to have changed in this commit. And that launches the diff of that notebook, which is substantially bigger because it's a real notebook with a lot of stuff, and I changed so this is illustrating custom display stuff in my Python. So I changed the parameters of the Gaussian. I can see the distribution is different. I can see the rendering is also different because this notebook is from a long time ago and matplotlib preferences and things have changed. My matplotlib preferences, that is. All right, and I've changed parameters. You can see the outputs where they're different. In a simple alignment, you can see, you know, I changed one two one two three to three two one, you know, and you can you can review and it's you know synchronized synchronized scrolling and things for uh, if you need to move around for long lines and and you can see cells added show up as green on the right and uh, cells removed show up as red on the left. This is a deleted cell. All right, there's a lot of rendering and stuff work to do with the main thing we're focusing in on is just getting the information on the page and then we've got wonderful uh, Jupyter designers that we can ask for help to make it look nice. And then, so, um, and I just click. Yeah. And I can see, so the metadata, so this is another thing where we have, so you can hide the output if you're not interested but we show it to you by default. Metadata is similar but the other way around will tell you that the metadata changed, but will hide it from you by default because the odds are you don't care. But you'll see. Last time I ran it, I was running Python 3.4.2. This time it was 3.5.1. All right. And I can expand to see the rest of the metadata if I'm interested. Go back. 
So another side, what about Markdown? You know, if you, if you just care about the input, um, using Markdown to view disks is also totally fine, and you can do this, the same thing with git diff drivers. You can pre-process files to convert them to Markdown with nvconvert, and then when git diff shows you that, it'll show you the Markdown version of two files. Um, and Tim Head has uh, posted about this on Twitter last week, and it, it works fine. It's just a couple lines of git configuration. So the last bit, we're all finished. What about merge? So merge is a lot harder. And there's a lot um, that we will have, but because I'm saying we will have it, we don't have all this. But what we have now, I will show you. So I'm in this repo, and I've got my um, local and remote. I've got nothing configured. This is regular default git. I'm going to do git. Um, do we get merge? I get, okay, conflicts, that's fine. Auto merge failed, there's conflicts in the file. What happens if I look at that? Oh, there's trouble. No, it's not actually a JSON file anymore. So what if I reset and, and then enable the notebook uh, mvdime merge driver? Run the same merge command again. This time it succeeded. And I can open my notebook to see what happened. And I've got a valid notebook, so at least that's a start. And then I can see I've got conflict markers saying, you know, where the, you know, I got output from one side and output from the other. And I've got both my figures. And if I rerun it um, locally, I'll, it will all be consistent. Yeah, so we've got lots of work to do. Uh, talk to designers about viewing it, custom uh, MIME type diffs, custom diffs for every MIME type, um, handle uh, unresolved conflicts. This, this only handles, that only works well if it can actually do the auto merge. Um, there's a lot of work we need to do on the, on the merging stuff. And then uh, a web app for actually doing conflict resolution in a merge, in, while merging a notebook. Um, and then integrate it into the, the cool Jupyter Lab stuff. And then just pointing out other people's work. And be strip out is a git filter for if you don't want to ever commit uh, outputs to git, git and be strip out will let you do that with a git filter. Um, and IPyMD and NoteDown will let you save notebooks as other formats um, if, if that's your preferred choice. And we're also thinking about in the Jupyter project itself splitting notebooks into two files at least some of the time so that outputs are in an easily git ignorable file kind of by default. That's a tricky conversation, but it's ongoing. And then thanks to you and everybody, especially Vidar and Martin at, uh, at Simula who are doing almost all of this work. Um, I'm just showing it to you. Um, and then Hans Petter, Fernando, and Brian who let me move to Norway, uh, which it, I'm enjoying very much. Yeah, thanks. I haven't checked what version of Git uh, drivers were introduced in. Um, I didn't know about them six months ago. I was um, so I was writing against Git diff tool, and diff driver is much nicer. Um, so I don't actually know how new your Git needs to be. I, d I don't know what version it was introduced in. I know that my version has it, <laughs> but I use Brew, so it's probably stable as of a day ago. So. So once we have, so part of the point of this, yeah, yeah, repeating the question, yeah. Um, so you were hoping that when I said Git, I meant GitHub, and I was going to show you a really nice uh, GitHub uh, diff view. So GitHub has custom diff viewing for things like images and GeoJSON. Um, we want the um, HTML view to look nicer than it does, and then we'll start the same conversations we did that we that got uh, notebook viewing. Um, on GitHub, we'll go through that same process to get notebook diff views on GitHub. Hopefully, um, we'd, but we don't want to. We don't want to ask them to put something on the page that uh, we know they wouldn't. <laughs> sure. 
yeah, any, anybody who's interested in The main thing is if we can take two notebooks and then make a nice HTML snippet, then, it, then it's easy for them to say, yeah, we'll put that up there, that's fine. Um, but we want to make that HTML snippet to be nice first. So diff drivers are um, for humans. Filters are for um, actually writing commits. Um, so that it doesn't actually mutate the document. It just it's just deciding what to show the human. Um, yeah, the question was about whether you get kind of patch level stuff um, in terms of composing a, a commit. And you can do you can do that with custom git filters, but that's not actually what we're what we're working on. We're not changing none of this work actually involves changing what is committed. It's just changing um, how it looks. Um, so if it involves showing you a diff, there's some inconsistency in Git. Um, there's a flag called uh, dash dash uh, ex. So the question is, if I'm looking at you know what changed a week ago, you know the many different ways that Git can show you information about what you've been doing, um, will it invoke this? And there are flags. There's a flag in Git called uh, for external diff, and it seems for some commands it will use external diffs by default, and for others, it will not, and you have to ask for it explicitly, but it's generally, up. if it will show you a diff, you can ask it to show you that, and it may or may not do it by default. You might have to add a flag. Um, I think show does need you to add a flag, add the flag for some reason, but diff doesn't, it, I, don't, I don't know why. It may not be on purpose. <laughs> 